Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech Daily News for Monday, June 1st, 2015. Fighting in the Ukraine has eased, but more than 6,400 people have died in the conflict. And the United Nations stated today that both sides continue to commit abuses that may amount to war crimes. Ivan Simonovic, assistant head of the United Nations Human Rights Office, told reporters in Geneva today that nearly 16,000 people have been injured since fighting began between Ukraine and pro-Russian separatists in April of 2014. Mr. Simonovic said that the casualty estimates are conservative as both sides have reported that hundreds of people are missing. Indiscriminate shelling has fallen, but shelling that in injures and kills civilians has not stopped. There are also reports of horrific accounts of torture and ill treatment and detention by both sides. Zayed Ra'ad Al Hussein, the head of the Human Rights Office, stated that they have documented and are investigating alarming reports of summary executions by armed groups. The UN is asking that priority be given to the clearing of mines and expressed concern about the safety of journalists in Ukraine as eight have been killed and many more detained by armed groups. At least 1,300 people in India died due to complications brought on by an extreme heat wave last week. But there was a plan that could have saved many of those people if it had just been utilized. Ahmedabad's Heat Action Plan, South Asia's first early warning system against extreme heat waves, is a plan tailored to help protect vulnerable communities during a heat wave. It was developed after temperatures in 2010 caused 1,300 deaths in Ahmedabad. The plan includes a system to warn people well in advance, give them information about not venturing out during the hottest time of the day, staying hydrated, recognizing the signs of heat stroke, heat exhaustion, and more serious heat-related health issues. That plan was specifically developed with metropolitan areas in mind, those areas in which heat is intensified by reflection off paved surfaces and a lack of trees, and also includes a template for cooling and water stations. That plan was not adopted as the temperature climbed to 114 degrees Fahrenheit and stayed there for days on end, spiking up to 116 degrees. Almost exactly one year ago, as people in northern India sweltered in the longest heat wave then on record, the highest temperature recorded was 113 degrees Fahrenheit. As we experience higher temperatures and longer duration of heat waves, Anjali Jaiswal of the U.S.-based Natural Resources Defense Council says spiking temperatures underscore the need for local heat adaptation plans and early warning systems to reduce health effects of heat stress and increase resilience in local communities to rising temperatures. The Houthi rebels in Yemen released an American freelance journalist today. Casey Coombs was held by the Houthis for two weeks. Mr. Coombs has written for publications including The Intercept, The American Prospect, and Time Magazine. He will undergo a thorough medical examination before returning home to Seattle. The Obama administration has stated that a number of Americans have been detained by the Houthis, the Shiite rebel group that took control of Yemen's capital and forced the United States-backed Yemeni government from power earlier this year. Ahoy ho, everyone. Donna Blanchard, Think Tech Daily News.